Hello and welcome to another video about the foundation program. I'm sure a kind of junior doctor and I'm going to be starting an academic foundation program in August. So I wanted to share with you loads of great advice that I got when I was applying at your stage and also some practical tips that I use to help me get my first choice jobs. So just a disclaimer, the only reason I'm making this is because I really, really believe in breaking down barriers to opportunity. And I know that specifically for the academic foundation program, a lot of the time it feels like all this information is kind of behind closed doors or only available if you know someone and so my focus for this is really just to get this message to as many people as possible. Now before we delve into the Academic Foundation program I did just want to talk briefly about the other two types of programs so the Foundation Priority and the Psychiatry Foundation Fellowships just so we can talk about it all and you've got all the information before you make any decisions. I've also already covered the Standard Foundation program so if you haven't already seen that video I'll link it somewhere here so you can have a look at that. That's a great one to watch before this because there's a lot of stuff in that that's going to overlap with this so I'm not going to cover it again in terms of how to choose a deanery and things like that. Also in order to complete any of these applications you have to complete a standard foundation application so there may be some tips in there that you find useful. So what is the foundation priority program? It's basically where you get incentives to go to a less popular geographical area so these incentives could be things like fully funded courses and qualifications, it could be research, teaching or leadership opportunities, it could be networking opportunities, it could be a bucket load of money, <laughs> it could be free housing, placement abroad. So there's a lot of things on offer here and it sounds like a pretty sweet deal. So you can find out more about these programs by going to the UK FPO website. They have like a huge document which details all of these programs, where they're located, what incentives you're gonna get. I couldn't seem to find the one for this year's application. I don't think it's out yet. So I've linked the one from last year which should hopefully give you like a vague overview of the programs. So let's talk through the pros and cons. Now one thing you might have noticed when you're browsing through this document sheet is that some of these less popular areas are actually in quite competitive deaneries and so you may find that by applying for a foundation priority program you're actually able to beat the competition and get into a more competitive deanery. So you can effectively be incentivized for going to a place that you already wanted to go. Another great benefit of this program is that if you know you're interested in a particular specialty, so for example general practice or paediatrics, then you can show having a foundation priority program with a focus in this specialty as being something like a commitment to specialty. So commitment to specialty is going to be one of the things that's important to you on your specialty training application. It's basically their way of seeing that you didn't just wake up one morning and decide that you want to do the specialty and you have consistently been working towards it in some form. So having quality improvement projects in that specialty, building your network, having extra teaching and supervision in that specialty, all these sorts of things will help towards that and the Foundation Priority Programme can offer a lot of these things for you. So apart from all these incentives, another thing which is really great about the Foundation Priority Programme is that you get to rank your jobs early. Now that's something that's there with the Academic Foundation Programme and the Foundation Priority Programme, is that you don't apply to a specific deanery, you also apply to specific jobs. So you only apply to the specific combinations that you know you're going to accept. You also end up getting your offer earlier than the standard foundation program, which is nice in terms of like life planning and stuff. And with the foundation priority programs, if you do accept one, then you get pulled out of the standard foundation program pool and you just get your priority program. So quick fire about the psychiatry foundation fellowships. So these are really great, of course, if you're interested in psychiatry. And again, with this, you get loads of incentives to help you along with your specialty training application. So the incentives that you'll get through this are geared towards making you a really competitive applicant for specialty training. So there are things like getting a dedicated career mentor to guide you, you'll get networking opportunities, you'll get extra educational opportunities in psychiatry, and you might also get some research and quality improvement opportunities as well. But basically, all of this stuff is really gonna strengthen your application if you are thinking of applying for psych training. So you apply through the Royal College of Psychiatrists. So it's a little bit different to applying for a foundation priority program or an academic program. And you do have to put in a standard foundation program application alongside this. But one really great thing about the Psychiatry Foundation Fellowship is that 
you get your offer after you get your standard foundation program deem reallocation and so you are in a great position to make the decision knowing both and, and this is the only program which allows you to do that because with both the academic foundation program and foundation priority program you have to make your decision before you know about your standard foundation program allocation and so oftentimes you're kind of like oh I don't know how I did but I got this and it's kind of not exactly what I wanted but maybe I should just take it anyway because I don't know how I'm gonna do in that and like I mentioned before in my standard foundation program video it's a really good thing to have more choice when it comes to February and March time because the way you see things might be quite different to the way you're looking at it back in October or November when you apply and so you might find that actually jobs which you weren't that keen on before you're now more interested in so even if you're not super keen on it when you do apply by the time you get your offer you might actually really want to do that so just like with the other programs if you do accept a psychiatry foundation fellowship you get pulled out of the standard foundation program and that becomes your actual program thank you so much for listening I really hope that was useful